talk about the parts of the uh, of the 87 series head. This particular one is mounted uh, onto a um, piece of aluminum extrusion right here. And this entire unit can slide up and down to adjust the distance between your working surface and the face of the thermode. And the way you do that is by loosening a hex head right there and another one right back in here and then this thing will slide up and down. Uh, on this side of the 87A we have the um, filter regulator and this is where you put input air into the system. This uh, regulator should be set somewhere around 65 or 70 psi most of the time. This is just a thermocouple wire here that's uh, lifted up around it and, and I hang it there to kind of keep it out of the way because you don't want to run the thermocouple wires near the power wires because they can interfere. On this side of the head is the uh, solenoid valve and of course the wire coming from the head I.O. on the back that we talked about earlier runs right here into the solenoid. This controls the air um, going to this cylinder which drives this entire uh, system right here up and down. This is what retracts your thermode and extends it down to the working surface. You can see there's some flexure cables here out of copper that flex as this process happens. Now this particular head with this solenoid valve it has uh, a manual override right here. And if you push this button, as you can see, it, it fires the head down. And you can control the speed at which this goes down with some flow controls that are uh, attached up here on the cylinder if you want it to travel faster. I want to talk about the mechanism inside this head and how it works because this is common to many types of reflow heads. The Avio, Unitec, Microjoin, Hughes, and many of the uh, Unitech heads of all their styles, if they use a spring-loaded pressuring system, then they operate on this principle. There's two different mechanisms in here that are running independently. The first one is driven by this air cylinder, uh, and some versions actually use a foot pedal to pull this down instead of an air cylinder. But the air cylinder makes this entire mechanism, including this part of the head here and the thermo down below, this is what causes the up and down travel. Now what actually fires the power supply or causes it to begin the heating sequence is this micro switch right here. And in order to initiate that, something has to provide some resistance that causes this to go move up just like this right here. So this mechanism moves independent from the other. So what happens is if you fire this down and nothing pushes up on the thermode or the head, then nothing triggers the power supply to fire or to begin the heating sequence. However, if you push down on this and something does provide resistance on the head right here, for example, if I lift up on this, right there where that switch starts to click, that's going to trigger the power supply to begin the heating sequence. That is how the power supply knows that your thermode has made contact with uh, some surface and that there's actually pressure being applied, which is what's required for the reflow system to work. It's got to have some pressure pushing the components together. So keep in mind that you can't just initiate a reflow cycle and, and run it kind of in a dry run or a test run without something that actually provides some resistance that will cause this switch right here to be released just like that. You can also see that there are travel adjustments here. This screw adjusts uh, the, the travel coming back up and it's got a down travel adjustment which is the screw that's inside this tube. Uh, right now it's adjusted for maximum travel but you could reduce that by uh, screwing this uh, socket his cap screw right here downward. So that's how it works. And as you adjust this knob right here, it adjusts the preload on this spring. And it changes the amount of force that's required to initiate this movement that releases the micro switch right there. It's important when using a head that you have the head pressure set properly and uh, that depends a lot on your application but basically by turning this right here you're adjusting the preload on a spring in here and the spring is what gets pushed when this thing is lifted up and trips a micro switch 
So basically you got some numbers along here and a little indicator rod sticking out right here. And you'll need to find a pressure that is appropriate for your application. And understand that this head, I'm going to fire this again as I did a minute ago. This head must see pressure on the face of the thermode in order for it to trip. Right here when I lift this up, right there it clipped the micro, it tripped the micro switch and that's what would initiate the power supply to uh, basically heat up the thermode. And if you don't get that then it won't heat up. So what all that basically means is that you need to set the overall position of this thing so that this ends up tripping the micro switch at the right height uh, when you come in contact with the surface of whatever it is you're trying to bond here. The other thing is because of the length of this it's very important that you get even pressure across the face of the thermode. So any tooling that you build or design down here needs to have some adjustment in it so you can level it to where it's parallel with this. If you have it sitting where you get all pressure on one side and not on the other then you're going to end up with a bond on the side that's getting pressure and some sort of a weak or inferior bond on the side that's not getting any appropriate amount of pressure. Installing this kind of hot bar is pretty straightforward. There's a row of screws right here that screw into the hot bar and there's another set on the back side here and you basically just line it up and uh, snug it down tight. This right here is the thermocouple wire which is kind of fragile so you need to be careful with it. It can be pulled loose. This has to be plugged in in order for everything to work. So right here we're going to turn the power supply on and I'm going to illustrate some of the principles that I've just explained. First of all this thing is uh, it's got a program in there that's set. I want to show you what happens when nothing touches the hot bar and you trip the foot switch which is right here. You can see everything comes down but the system just sits here with the ready button and the temperature is not changing. And the reason for that is because we have not lifted this up and tripped the micro switch. But if there were something under here that did lift this up and trip the micro switch, you can see now that I tripped it one time, now we're getting heat. It's going up to temperature. And then it retracts. So if you need to dry cycle this thing and you don't uh, want to touch the face of the thermo to something, you can put a piece of non-conductive material under here like a piece of plastic. Uh, right here I've just got a couple of blocks. You can stack them up. Uh, kind of there's a set of four screws under here and you really need to have all four of those screws hitting on something so it doesn't asymmetrically torque this. But if you were to do this and trip this, uh, this head would cycle because when the cylinder fires it down, this right here stops it so that it compresses the spring and trips the switch. I'll just show you. You see right there it's going to go through another cycle. There it brings it up to the temperature. 300 is where we had it set. Now it's cooling off. And when it reaches the solid point setting it will retract. And right there was the solid point which was set at 175. So those are the major components to this. Understand that you need to have your product parallel to the hot bar and this is more critical the longer the hot bar is. Understand that you need to have appropriate pressure set. Speed right here of which this thing comes up and down. You don't want it to just crash into your product. You need to have uh, 65 to 70 PSI here to run this. Route this away from the power cables. Power cables attached here and here on each side and those cannot be shorted across. Everything has to be isolated. This is one complete circuit that comes through the hot bar and back to the other side of the circuit. The hot bar must be installed here without shorting. It must be installed appropriately and correctly and the uh, thermocouple wire needs to be plugged in. And everything has to be uh, basically done correctly or you'll get an error on the system and you'll get a light that comes on right here. For example, if I unplug this thermocouple, this thing automatically senses that that thermocouple is unplugged, that the circuit was messed up, and you can see right there the error light has come on. And so in order to clear that, I have to plug the thermocouple in, uh, which I'll do right now even though you can't see it on the camera. And I'm going to hit reset on the screen right here, and then the ready light has come back on.